I, XSGO, welcome you to Replay Academy, where we learn from your mistakes. I'll be announcing the winners from last week's trivia question giveaway at the end of the video, along with this week's trivia question and the reason why I'm doing trivia again this week, also at the end of the video. This week's replay was sent in by Tageda92 from the European server. The replay he sent in was buggy and he apologized for it being buggy. Admittedly, there is nothing we can do about that until Wargaming fixes the issues regarding replays. In the message that he sent, he felt that he was to blame for the draw that occurred. He's felt that he should have done something differently, that he should have likely gone to the cap or should have reacted faster to kill the carriers before the enemy ships, the other enemy ships. Now I'm going to be commentating over the replay and I'll give my input at the same time or after. I've sped up the battle to 150% to, well just of course to speed it up. As you would see right here, he is currently engaging a battleship at range, he's done 1000 damage in that salvo right there. A bit on the Furutaka, the Furutaka is the tier 5 Japanese cruiser. Comparing it, comparing it to the Omaha, which is the US cruiser. The Omaha, while it has more guns and uh, faster moving turrets, the Omaha actually has smaller guns and he takes out that battleship right there. Uh, the Furutaka has 20.3 centimeter guns in comparison to the 15.5 or what's it, the 18, either of the two 18 cm or 15 cm cannons that the Oma has. And of course to balance that out, the Furutaka has a much slower turret rotation speed and he did a good citadel hit on that cruiser if I'm not mistaken. Chewing AP right there. Are you gonna go around give a good whacking? Now, personally, when I played the Furutaka, it's a bit of a ship to get used to. You you have to adapt your styles. This is something I'm gonna be preaching a lot of you. Before you complain about a ship, have you considered adapting towards how you should play the ship? So yeah, just a bit on that. And it looks like he's probably gonna get the kill on that. He's gonna get the killing blow on that cruiser over there. Let's see, I'm gonna get the fire some shells out. He's probably gonna get him most likely. Yep, and he gets him right there. He now he's up to two kills, he's moving a bit. Now going back to his positioning also, his positioning seems to be pretty okay right here. But yeah, I suggested that he should have gone to with the cruiser and the destroyer that's down south right now and assisted them in capping the, the enemy's cap. Now that was actually one of the things he was trying to address, like if he should have gone into the cap or killed something faster. But anyways, from what we could see here, he's actually going up north, he's engaging that cruiser there. Uh, in, in his screen, he's probably he can see the cruiser, but in our screen, he's behind the island. So even those torpedoes he's launched have just like gone through the island, which is pretty comical to be honest. All right, he's getting some more shots out, shooting HE at him. Oh, got his engine right there. This what just a quick follow of his torpedoes. This is actually clicking Z to check where your shells are going is actually a really efficient way to do stuff. And he gets the kill right there. He's gonna ram an island, but yeah. Uh, using the Z key to check your where your torpedoes are going or where your shells is going is a very effective way to actually check where your shells are going. And oh, the, those torpedoes are coming in, but they're not going to be an exactly worry because if you if you were to follow the markers itself, they won't hit him. But the wakes actually hit him, so yeah. But going back to it again, since I got derailed, uh, using using the Z key and following where the trajectory of your torpedoes or shells, it's a great way to adjust your shots, especially for battleships which have long reload times. So you can it assists you with long range gunnery in my honest opinion. But for cruisers, not really depends if you're like trying to hit a destroyer, but really really useful for battleships. The following your your go, your shell flights is really useful for battleships. Anyways he's engaging that cruiser over there. And we could see that his team has started the cap. The cruiser and destroyer are in the cap. But they see a delicious aircraft carrier. We all know what they're probably gonna do right now. But going back to Takeda over here, he's trying to get more shots into that cruiser that's heading back towards Cap to attempt a reset. But of course that is actually unnecessary considering what the th his team will actually do. And this comes to the point also where I will actually say this also, like just a bit, is that you should have gone to the cap because as much as you could rely on your team, remember that pretty much 70% of the time your team is probably going to work against you. And the time is around mid-game so it's a really good time to get into cap where because most people have actually done their damage and everyone would receive a decent amount of e experience from the game. And we can see him bouncing around because thanks to buggy replay and that's always really funny. But going back again since I'm getting derailed constantly right now. Uh, 
Around mid-game, it's really good time to cap because everyone has done their damage, everyone has experience. Never cap really early on the game. As much as it's a victory, it's a wasted victory. Yeah, you win, but that's it. No one's stats improve. No one, no one gets to do the damage they need to do to get they get the experience. It's a waste of your daily 1.5 bonuses or 3.3 time bonuses. Total waste. So don't cap early game. Always cap during the mid game. That's the best time to cap. When it's around late game, that's around like five minutes. Uh, it's a bit hard to cap because. It's uh, it most likely both battles will mostly end in a draw unless, especially if there's like people to reset stuff. Now we're going again to Takeda again. We can see now he's engaging the battleship that's currently capping their base, and uh, down south the cruiser that was that that was with the destroyer got distracted and it got killed. Anyways, there is a another destroyer in their base trying to cap, but uh, I highly doubt he'd actually be any effective in there. Actually, no, he's actually going to be capping for quite some time. He's going to be taken out by that cruiser once he goes back. Where's that battleship there? He's just a bit chilling. And thanks to the replay bug, we can see the battleship's model going someplace else and the battleship marker itself going somewhere else. He's going to be dropping some torpedoes right now. Let's see if we can get him. Oh, no. He didn't drop torpedoes. He's just going to probably try and gun him. Now I'll applaud him for be for Takeda for being really passive here. He's actually kept his hit points up, trying to really be passive, passive aggressive. That's the term I'd probably call it. And he gets the uh, the battleship with his torpedoes. Now I was going back south to the map. We can see that the other destroyer that was down south that was chasing the carrier Spryor has been killed, and the other destroyer that's currently in cap right now trying to cap as much as he can is currently endangered because that cruiser and him cruiser is turning around to deal with him now. Tageda is a bit far out to assist anyone and I guess that's really around all I could really say here because after that it just turns out being a chase of him chasing the carriers, the cruisers and stuff like that so I'll really skip to that. Now I'll be doing a in-depth look at the positioning of Tageda's team and the enemy team. Alright, we could see right here the game starts off pretty normally. The left side goes to the left side, the right side tends to stay at the right side. The battleships at mid tend to go to the left side. Now, one of the battleships makes a really, really weird error in going to the mid. As to why you go into the mid in a battleship to get sorted out is why would anyone do that, to be honest? Now, we can see the enemy team from the left side has performed up pretty well. This was actually pretty good until they decided to go their separate ways. That was a horrible decision, also. You'll get singled out, you'll get focus fired upon, and see that what happened? They just got vaporized right there. The right side of the Geta team, I don't know what happened, but as far as I know, there was a destroyer there, and they apparently they cannot handle a destroyer. Like, really, guys, it's not that hard. Enemy, uh, his allied cruiser and destroyer are now in the cap, and now they get off the cap because they got distracted by the carriers. Please don't let your greed take over you. You guys got killed from that. You should have just stayed in cap, cap, get rid of the cruiser that's in there. The other destroyer would have actually come in and support, helped you guys also. Now, he's actually going up north. He's actually, as I said a while ago, in his you know, gameplay, he's actually really far to support anyone, so the destroyer down south actually gets swarmed by like tons of aircraft and gets taken out also by the cruiser. Really sad guy. Now he's actually going through mid and he's probably gonna go try and kill the, the carriers. He's actually now also being swarmed. Good thing he's being helped out by his allied carrier. Like really, I mean positioning wise, some errors. Both teams did some really weird things. Like on I don't know why they even did something, but ultimately Takeda should have gone, simply put, with the destroyer and the cruiser that went south, helped them cap, actually, st and st probably stayed in cap because those two were going to go out of cap. The number one thing we always have to remember, remember in this game is that your team will probably work against you even if you like it or not, even if they're your team. They will probably work against you. Secondly also is that it's always a great time to cap during mid-game. Never and thirdly, never cap during early game or late game. Late game, too much, too little time. Early game, too early. No one has ever done any damage. Really bad EXP rates and credit rates right there. I want to take some time now to thank Takeda92 for sending in his replay. If you want to send in a replay for next week's episode, send it to excessgogames at gmail.com. That is e x e s g o games at gmail.com, and follow the prescribed format in the description down below. The winners of last week's giveaway are D Daniel w Waters, and let me just take some time to prepare for this, and Haupt Strumpfuhr Whitman. So congratulations, and I'll be sending you your beta keys by messaging, and you should actually be receiving them by now. 
So this week's going to be another trivia week, uh, just because beta is going to be apparently closed beta is going to be ending soon and open beta is coming soon. So I'll be giving away three keys today, uh, so that you guys can a higher chance of you guys getting the 50 games you need for the Arkansas, the beta reward chip. If you guys get in. So this week's question is this: What sank the Bismarck? That's a pretty simple question, so I'll pretty much leave that. If you have the answer, put it down in the comment section down below. Like, dislike, favorite, subscribe, comment, and I hope you guys something learned from this week's episode. And I'll catch you guys next time. killed something faster but anyways from what we could see here he's actually going up north he's engaging that cruiser there uh, in, in his screen he's probably he can see the cruiser but in our screen he's behind the island so even those torpedoes he's launched have just like gone through the island which is pretty comical to be honest right, he's getting some more shots out shooting he at him who got his engine right there just a quick follow of his torpedoes. This is actually clicking Z to check where your shells are going is actually a really efficient way to do stuff. And he gets the kill right there. He's gonna ram an island. But yeah, uh, using the Z key to check your where your torpedoes are going or where your shells is going is a very effective way to actually check where your shells are going. And oh, those, those torpedoes are coming in. But they're not gonna be exactly worried because if you if you were to follow the markers itself, they won't hit him. But the wakes actually hit him. So yeah. But going back to it again, since I got derailed, uh, using using the Z key and following where the trajectory of your torpedoes or shells, it's a great way to adjust your shots, especially for battleships which have long reload times. So you can it assists you with long range gunnery, in my honest opinion. But for cruisers, not really depends if you're like trying to hit a destroyer, but really really useful for battleships. The following your your go, your shell flights is really useful for battleships. Anyways, he's engaging that cruiser over there. And we could see that his team has started the cap. The cruiser and destroyer are in the cap. But they see a delicious aircraft carrier. We all know what they're probably going to do right now. But going back to Takeda over here. He's trying to get more shots into that cruiser that's heading back towards cap to attempt a reset. But of course that... Hi, Access Go welcome you to Replay Academy, where we learn from your mistakes. I'll be announcing the winners from last week's trivia question giveaway at the end of the video, along with this week's trivia question and the reason why I'm doing trivia again this week, also at the end of the video. This week's replay was sent in by Takeda92 from the European server. The replay he sent in was buggy and he apologized for it being buggy. Admittedly, there is nothing we can do about that until Wargaming fixes the issues regarding replays. In the message that he sent, he felt that he was to blame for the draw that occurred. He felt that he should have done something differently, that he should have likely gone to the cap or should have reacted faster to kill the carriers before the enemy ships, the other enemy ships. Now I'm going to be commentating over the replay and I'll give my input at the same time or after. I've sped up the battle to 150% to, well just of course to speed it up. As you would see right here, he is currently engaging a battleship at range. He's done 1000 damage in that salvo right there. A bit on the Furutaka. The Furutaka is the tier 5 Japanese cruiser. Comparing it comparing it to the Omaha, which is the US cruiser. The Omaha, while it has more guns and uh, faster moving turrets, the Omaha actually has smaller guns. And he takes out that battleship right there. Uh, the Furutaka has 20.3 centimeter guns in comparison to the 15.5 or what's it, the 18, either of the two 18 cm or 15 cm cannons that the Omaha has. And of course, to balance that out, the Furutaka has a much slower turret rotation speed, and he did a good citadel hit on that cruiser, if I'm not mistaken. Shooting AP right there. Or he's gonna go around, give a good whacking. Now, personally, when I played the Furutaka, it's a bit of a ship to get used to. You, you have to adapt your styles. This is something I'm gonna be preaching a lot of you. Before you complain about a ship, have you considered adapting towards how you should play the ship? So, yeah, just a bit on that. 
it looks like he's probably going to get the kill on that. He's going to get the killing blow on that cruiser over there. Let's see. We're going to get he fire some shells out. He's probably going to get him most likely. Yep, and he gets him right there. He, now he's up to two kills. He's moving a bit. Now, going back to his positioning also. His positioning seems to be pretty okay right here. But yeah, I suggested that he should have gone to with the cruiser and the destroyer that's down south right now and assisted them in capping the, the enemy's cap. Now, that was actually one of the things he was trying to address, like if he should have gone into the cap. 